as an institution, we're pretty good at sharing ideas when we're all together in a classroom or even in a conference room together. But when it comes to communicating using newer online tools, uh, many of us are just too busy with the day-to-day -day routine to, to play with new technology and experiment with finding a better way of communicating and collaborating with online tools. So one reason we have if chosen to use the Google Hangouts tool is because it's available to anyone at ATSU and we want to enable people to um, to learn something about this collaboration tool, better understand it and get comfortable with online interaction simply by experiencing the session. So one of our goals uh, with this is that, but really we've got two, two goals. The first is um, hopefully the topics that we present and information that we show will be helpful to you, um, but really the second uh, uh, goal that we have is to use these lunch and learn sessions to experiment. So we're continuing to tweak various aspects of these lunch and learns to try and figure out how to build better virtual community, um, share more ideas online and evolve our geographically separated campuses into a truly a combined learning organization. So those are the goals. Um, if you're participating for the first time, just sit back at your computer or your mobile device. You can actually use uh, mobile devices with Google Hangouts now. Um, relax and enjoy the broadcast. Um, using Hangouts can be a very passive way to participate um, in, in something like this session and hopefully you'll learn something from today's topic. But hopefully um, most of you have been here before and if you're more adventurous, then we would really like you to not be passive. We really want you to participate. So to participate, you can add your comments in what we refer to as the chat room. And the chat room is just the comment area for this event on Google+. So we highly encourage you to interact with others involved in the session, ask questions, share your opinions, post your thoughts, engage in some healthy and hopefully fun um, online discussion about the topic, or as I say, um, just throw virtual tomatoes. Uh, but use the comment tools in the Google Plus event area to do that. So we have people who are monitoring those comments um, and we'll try and bring any ideas that pop up there uh, into the questions during the session. So we've got a, a good uh, session today. Today we're going to hear about um, a very interesting and innovative project, I think, that's coming out of the Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine, or KCOM. Um, the iPad initiative is how it's commonly referred to, um, and it's really a student-led project. It began uh, just over a year ago. Um, in that past year, uh, an initial pilot was conducted, a fair amount of data was collected and analyzed, um, and the project has now been expanded to include um, all of the students in the entering KCUM class of 2016 and, and even some additional students. So we're glad to have uh, several of the students involved in the early stages of the initiative um, and uh, one of the key administrators who helped nurture it to its current state. So I'll start by um, introducing uh, some of the guys. So at least on my screen, uh, to the right of me is uh, Dan Hilton. Um, Dan uh, is in the process of doing an anatomy fellowship, right, Dan? That's right, yep. So I think that means you're in between your second and third year classes. Is that right? Right, yep. yep. And then to his right is, um, is Kevin Sagers. Kevin is a second year KCUM student. Is that yep. right? So yep. you, and, you and Dan will graduate together in 2015. Okay. Um, then we're going to skip over the next box, at least on my screen, and go uh, one more to the right in the green shirt. We've got Mike McGrew. How are you doing? So Mike uh, is in the incoming class of uh, 2016, and he was a biomed uh, last year. And then Talon is a, a biomed this year. So he's uh, Talon Anderson with the uh, nice name tag there. Good job, Talon, is uh, the one on the far right. Um, thanks for doing this, guys. Appreciate it. And then uh, from an administrator standpoint, we're very lucky to have with us um, Dr. Margaret Wilson. Um, Dr. Wilson has uh, just been named in July the, uh, the new dean of the Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine. And um, uh, it's after several years of uh, uh, participating as the uh, chair, I believe, of family medicine and teaching at uh, KCUM for lots of years. So. Um, lots of history and lots of uh, practice uh, experience as well. So thanks, Dr. Wilson, for being here. Welcome. Good. So I, I, I think maybe we'll start off by just trying to get a, a little background of the project. And I'll, I'll throw it to Mike, um, since he tends to be the, the, the guy that I go to for the first questions. Mike and the rest of you guys chime in to just kind of give us a, a quick 
overall summary of the project, how you would explain it to other people, um, and then we'll go into a little bit more detail from there. Sure, Brian, thanks. Um, really, the whole goal of the project was to create a, a great learning environment here at KCOM by using the iPad uh, for the te its technological purposes. Of course, the other thing that we wanted to do was to create a greener campus. Um, uh, Dan Hilton sort of brought that aspect into the group as we brought it all together. And really what we're trying to do is create sort of a learning-centered environment where students, professors, and faculty all come together uh, using the iPad uh, to, as a learning tool to uh, further uh, medical education. Yeah, that's good. Anyone else have anything else to add? Well, I, I'd just like to say, Brian, I think that this has truly been a student-driven project that uh, has received great support from, from you and, and the IT department, Dr. Laird, to really get this going, to really uh, be a, a, um, a model of how to uh, develop a better campus and to address student needs and really uh, lead us forward into the uh, technology that our students are going to find useful for learning. So I applaud the efforts of all the students that have put so much time and effort in the IT department, Dr. Laird, everyone who kind of supported it along the way. I think we're uh, really showing um, that uh, we're moving forward with uh, um, kind of the, um, the leading uh, type of, of technology for our students. Yeah, I think it's an interesting project in that it is so student-led. Um, and, and so I'll kind of ask the guys, you know, how, how did the original idea for the project come about? I mean, did you see other schools doing it? Did you hear about it somewhere? Or kind of give us the genesis of how, it, how you guys organized. I think a lot of it came about, uh, well, from my, from my point of view, just a lot of paper being printed out for each lecture and and just chatting around with uh, some of the other guys here in the group, with Mike and Kevin, and and Kevin had kind of spearheaded the whole iPad idea with um, his use of the iPad, and then we brought Talon in, and and it basically, as we looked more and more into it, we discovered that there were more schools that were were doing it currently, um, some of the big name schools like Stanford, Harvard, Yale. Um, we're doing the kind of a similar iPad movement, and we thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool if, if KCOM were up there with them as well? Yeah, I, uh, my first year, I came with my own iPad that I had bought, in, uh, bought during my undergrad, and I was using that um, after about the first test uh, here at KCOM. I, I realized, man, I'm not staying very organized with all of these paper notes and there's so much to learn and I need to be able to find things quickly and efficiently. Um, so I kind of started using it on my own, just saying it helps me stay more organized. And then as I started talking to these other guys, they, you know, were experiencing similar uh, feelings with all of the notes that we take during medical school and things. Um, and then they kind of came up with the idea, well, let's see where we can take this and let's see who we can talk to about exploring this idea a little bit. And, like was like it was mentioned earlier, um, we've you know we we put a lot of time into this, but we've received an unbelievable amount of support and uh, encouragement from administration and faculty here, as far as uh, developing our ideas and and sharing our ideas. Uh, everyone's always been very open and very helpful, so we were excited about it, and I think we've got uh, pretty much the whole school excited about it now. So. Kevin, you you were the only one, though, I think, that, that actually had an iPad, weren't you? I don't think yeah. any of the other guys did. <laughs> yeah, they thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> so I think, really, they saw what you were doing, and, and it sounds to me like mm -hmm. your emphasis was, was more on the organizing your materials rather than really thinking about the potential for medical applications on the iPad. Right. I hadn't been around a whole long time, a real long time when when these guys were coming up with these ideas. Mike and Dan had been here for a year already and were into their second years on campus and they had seen what happens with paper notes and how much printing was done. They also knew a little bit more about the application of uh, tech devices and technology in medicine. Um, I was just brand new green 
fresh off of undergrad uh, when I started using my iPad, so I didn't really know all of the uh, implications that a project like this could have had. But um, for me, it was just trying to, to handle the situation of learning better um, here in medical school. And it seems like it was more about searching for information because there's such a, a large um, volume of content that you actually have to manage. Yeah, yeah, it was accessibility to your information is a big deal. Um, organization is a big deal. So that's kind of how it started for me when I first started using my iPad. But as I went along, I kind of saw the, the goals of these guys is very valuable as well. Okay, so so they see you and you're kind of the whiz using the iPad to organize your stuff, but it, it seems like it's a pretty large step then to go from a few people who think it's a cool idea to actually moving it into um, a project where uh, you know all of the first-year students now get the iPad and, and you're teaching them how to organize their notes and whatnot. Tell us a little bit about you know what were some of the steps that you took to get buy-in from administrators, faculty, um, I, I assume even other students. I think I went in November to Dr. Laird, Stephen Laird's office, who is the uh, Assistant Dean of Ac Academic Affairs here, uh, and I just, this was before I had even talked with Mike McGrew or Talon, and Kevin and I had just been throwing around ideas about saving paper by using the iPad. So I went to Dr. Laird's office and just said, hey, you know, this is our idea. What do you think about it? And Dr. Laird said, you know, I'm 100% behind you if you can prove that that's what the students want. So we started doing some, some surveys through uh, the Internet and ended up with some, some pretty solid data that, that that is what the students wanted and uh, took that back to Dr. Laird and kind of, by this moment, we had joined forces with Mike and uh, Talon, and, and Mike at the time was the IT chairperson, I believe, for for the stu SGA or the Student Government Association. And yeah, so Mike, maybe maybe talk a little bit about that. You know, how did you take it to SGA? Because I know they weren't all on board right out, right off the bat either, were they? No, you know, I think a lot of it was timing. Um, you know, we all had the idea at a very similar time. And then, of course, we, you know, getting involved with Kevin, with the students, we knew that after we talked, to, after Dan had talked to Dr. Laird, that we were going to need student support. So we brought our idea uh, to the Student Government Association. We gave a proposal about how we were going to use the iPads and, and gave our goals and basically an outline. Um, took that into the Executive Council of the Student Government Association, and they approved it. And from there, uh, we were able to get uh, obviously, in with administration, more uh, talking with Dr. Laird, um, yourself, and then as well as uh, eventually uh, Dean Wilson. And, and what were some of the big issues? I, I know one of the issues was, you know, should we go all iPad or just tablets in general? How were we going to fund the project? I know that was a big issue. Talk to us a little bit about some of the, the, the process and how you kept it moving forward. Well, of course, the biggest obstacle for some students was the fact that, you know, well, why the iPad? You know, why, why not? Why don't we do an Android device? Um, you know, why not a tablet PC? Um, really, we were following a model from earlier medical schools, and, and we knew that, well, tablet PCs were great, but it didn't have quite the app support as Apple had. Um, Android devices were definitely an option, but as we did the surveys, we found that more people were familiar with the iOS environment. So more people either had an iPhone or an iPod Touch or some sort of Apple device. So it was a device that many students were already familiar with using. In fact, when we actually sent a survey asking how many people would be interested in an Android device, we had less than five students respond saying, hey, I would be interested in learning how to do this on a Samsung Galaxy or another Android device. And so from that and based off of uh, numbers of looking at doctors that use them, we saw a lot of studies that showed that a lot of uh, medical uh, offices now that are using the iPads, so you have a lot of people down downstream that are using iPads as well, residents using iPads, so it kind of trickles down, of course, to the medical school level, and having that sort of overwhelming majority of market share that, that the iPad has, it was a great start. You know, not that an Android device couldn't, you know, necessarily do some of the things that 
that we're looking at right now, but it was it, it was a perfect start. It had the perfect sort of ecosystem in place, and so we decided to stick with the iPad based off of, of course, student interest and, and sort of, again, how it had the majority of the market share. And, and of course, with that, you have apps and publishers and just a, a, just a really big support system for the iPad right now. Yeah, that's good. Also, to go along one more plug with with that, um, we figured if we're going to be trying to track results of how usable things are and how steep of a learning curve and things are, we should try to keep it uniform rather than branch out to too many devices where um, different factors would be coming in to, to those measurements that we were trying to take. So we tried to keep it as uniform as we could. Yeah, and I know from an IT standpoint, that was one of the things, too, is, um, you know, it's a little bit easier to try and focus first on one device and figure out, you know, how to make some of the just procedural things work um, on one device before trying to expand it out. Um, you know, the marketplace changes, so I think all of us would agree that we'll just kind of watch the market and see what's going on, um, but the idea is still pretty valid. Dr. Wilson, I'm going to throw the next one to you because yeah. I think funding was probably one of your biggest concerns. Sure. Sure, yeah, that's always a, a big concern in the dean's office. But I, I have to say, you know, when the students came to, uh, you know, finally got to me in terms of uh, presenting the material, I, I was so impressed with all the work that had been put in, you know, up to that point and the really fine-tuning and honing and, and really doing an exceptional job of presenting a case for how this would enhance learning, you know, make us a greener campus. Um, they did a, a, an outstanding job. It was kind of timely. I actually had just gotten back from a national uh, conference on medical education and had just seen another school's presentation on uh, their iPads and their curriculum. So it, it tied in nicely to what, what, what is going on at um, you know other medical schools. But the presentation they gave, re gave really sold me on how useful this would be. And, and it was really a matter of then, you know, how can we get it done? And, and I think, uh, you know, when, when there's a will there's a way and we just looked at resources and a way to make it happen and meeting with the uh, financial aid people uh, eventually came up with the idea which was very I think unique and, and positive to integrate it into um, their equipment at the time of matriculation as a first year. So I think that's been great. Uh, that stage two's kind of been uh, getting the iPads out to the faculty and the departments to try to get their uh, uh, their hands on them and start to introduce the faculty to the applications and how they can make it useful uh, for student learning in the classroom. And, and we're still in, in kind of that phase and I see foresee a lot of uh, more faculty uh, education on that as we move forward this year. Good. And, and Talon, I, I think you were kind of the, the green guy, weren't you? Um, tell me if I'm, I'm mistaken, but I thought you were the one who kind of brought the whole um, paper reduction and green initiative into the equation. Oh, I think you're muted. Oh, nope, Talon, you might have to unmute yourself. All right, we'll throw it over. We'll throw it over to one of you other guys. Mike, you want to take that one, or Kevin, Dan? Mike's muted too. Um, I'll, <laughs> Talon was uh, very heavily involved with that. Uh, he he was our our main research and and really our presentation guy too. Um, he he did a lot of research into. Uh, or a lot of surveying looking at how people were using paper, how much paper people or students were using within the classroom, um, how much that paper costs uh, the school and the students. And, and he came up with some pretty convincing evidence um, that if we went paperless, uh, the iPads would actually kind of balance the budget a little bit uh, as far as paper and printer maintenance and and things like that. So uh, it was pretty impressive data. I think um, everyone was a little bit surprised when we threw the figures up in our presentation. Uh, I can't remember the exact numbers. Maybe one of the other guys does. I think it was about $104,000 in savings after, after the iPads had been purchased, if they were purchased by the school. And if the students ended up purchasing the iPads, it, it came out to about 210000 roundabout. 
in savings. Versus yes. paper, yeah. Versus paper. So, you know, that, that's one of those things where the proof is in the pudding. I don't think we've seen any of, the, of those yet because the project's so new, which, which kind of brings up a, another point, which, you know, from an educational standpoint, I mean, that, those really weren't the driving factors for this project, right? It really didn't come out of the educational mode. It really came out of um, organization of materials. And so there's some education component to being organized and being able to search your materials. But it really didn't come out from, um, you know, being able to learn better or, or anything like that per, as specifically as you might think. And so I'm wondering, I mean, the project's so new, and you guys have talked to some of these other schools, is there really any evidence that this type of project I improves overall learning? There is a study that was done in Texas that, you know, purports that it has, um, you know, on an individual basis. I think it's how you use it. You know, it's the more you, the, the thing that we keep telling students is keep using it so that you get more familiar with it. And the more familiar you get with it, the more you learn about how organized you can be. According to the surveys we sent out from our pilot group students, you know, a lot of them were paper, pencil people, and they, all of them commented on how more efficiently they were studying on the iPad. And I hear that all the time, even in my class, about how, more, how much more organized they are and how more efficient they are. So that, that definitely is probably the number one thing involved with using the iPad. But I would argue, too, that you got to intertwine a little bit there a better educational opportunity because with just some of the applications that students are using for anatomy, for instance, for quizzing themselves, uh, the ability to have all of your textbooks searchable in one spot there, um, you know, and, and intertwining sort of that environment on the iPad does lead to a better educational experience uh, by far, in, in my opinion. Uh, and, and then I've seen that from, of course, my, my uh, fellow students. It, I think as far as hard, raw research data, that kind of thing is going to be hard to prove um, because it, you can't make a student study with paper and pencil, forget everything, or take a test, then forget everything, study with an iPad, and take the test again and see which, which they got a better score on. Um, and as you introduce an iPad to a new student, well, you can track their test scores, but they're learning different material from test to test. You can try to average out their scores and things, but it might be difficult to try to provide some kind of raw data that shows test scores are higher for this individual student when they went from an iPad or from a paper pencil note taking system to an iPad. Um, but we, what we've kind of been postulating and we've kind of been experimenting with is the more um, efficient you are with your study, uh, the more wisely you use your time, the more accessible your material is, and the more additional resources that you have to uh, learn material, such as apps or access to the internet or sharing notes with um, classmates or things like that, the easier it is for you to learn. And if learning is easier and more efficient, then it could be better. Um, I think that's kind of the take that we've all taken with it. It would be hard to prove anything besides that, I think. And just to chime in again, too, and Dan can comment a little more on this, is, is, and Kevin said this, it really is causing interaction between not only the students but also with the professors. Dr. Hauser has done some wonderful uh, things using an application where he can do some supplemental teaching beyond the classroom to help clarify uh, some anatomy things. So I don't know if Dan wants to sort of talk more about how he, how he did that, what he was doing. Yeah. Um, so Dr. Hauser, I guess, has just, he found an app that was free and, and is able to record his voice and things that he, you know, he can import images on there, draw on the images, and almost make it like an interactive kind of a, a lecture. And, you know, a 10-minute ten, ten blip to clarify, you know, a common question that he's had come to him from multiple students. And, you know, he sends that out to the class, and now all of a sudden they all have access to that quick tutorial or video that he has created. And, you know, it's all free. Additionally, you know, we threw some of these apps 
professors can reference, you know, a textbook that's online, circle, you know, a, a point of emphasis, and with just a few clicks away, they can send that out to the entire class and say, you know, this is what I want you guys to focus on. So a lot of the collaborative effects of, of the iPad and, and, you know, this movement have been just helping everybody to kind of work together and, and enhance everybody's learning learning experience that way as well. And speaking of apps, what are the apps that you guys have kind of standardized on? What, what are the apps that are um, kind of required and then what are some of the other apps that people are commonly using? Well, Notability is the annotating app that we use for a lot of the PDF lectures. Uh, iCatcher is a podcast streamer that allows you to stream at 2x and, and is a nice nice feature as well. So, so tell, one, tell people why, why, why is that important to you guys as students? Because sometimes uh, you need to review a lecture in half the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was one thing that always surprised me is, you know, when we did the audio recordings of lectures, how important it was to students that they could speed them up. So I think that's an interesting thing. So Notability, <laughs> um, Eyecatcher, uh, what are a couple of the others? Good Player was another one that allows you to stream some of the videos uh, that otherwise would not stream on an iPad uh, due to just interface differences. Uh, Keynote's another one that's kind of not one of the main three, but a good one for presenting and things that students might use. And the one that Dr. Hauser has been using is called uh, Edu Creations, and uh, is some you know I, I think that's a, a great great tool for even students to use if they wanted to share you know different studying methods or different different things that way back and forth would be great. And I know I've seen uh, all of you guys, I think, running the Blackboard uh, tool, the Blackboard Mobile Learn tool. Um, so all of your Blackboard course material is available on the iPad. Um, and even the portal, some of the you know tools that are on there to be able to get to other tools. Um, what are the areas that we still need to work on? Well, there's some definite growing pains with, with Blackboard. In general, though, it works great. Uh, and honestly, they're, they're really the real growing pains is between the app and going online, and right now we, we mostly recommend students to go through the using Safari web browser to go to My Courses 9, uh, mostly because of the browser, I mean the application is still sort of in its infancy, it doesn't uh, cater well to testing environments, so for example, again in the anatomy class there's a lot of testing and quizzing that they'll use through Blackboard, you can't do that on the app yet, um, so you know, right now the biggest growing pain is sort of finding a way that students can go to one place instead of two places to get their material. And some students really do prefer the app. It is aesthetically more pleasing, but we still, of course, recommend they go to My Courses 9 when they're doing their testing, and, and generally that's where we ask them to go. Yeah. How do you guys manage, um, you know, because so much of, of using a tablet is personalized, how did you manage all of the 170 plus um, iPads and getting them set up. I mean, there were people who had never had any experience with a tablet. Uh, um, talk to us a little bit about the challenges that you that you had that first week as you were going through setting these up. I think uh, I think we prepared ourselves really well for that first week beforehand, um, as we were going through the initial pilot stages where we had small groups of students, groups of 20 or so students that were learning how to use the iPads. We had uh, developed a series of tu uh, tutorials on, on YouTube uh, using a screen capture tool to, to show how to do different things. Um, we had pretty much made a tutorial video for all of the common tasks done on a daily basis at medical school. So by the time the students were go about to receive their, their iPads, the incoming first years, we were able to send the links to those videos out to all of them and say, we highly recommend it, especially if you've never used an iPad before, we highly recommend you just watch these. 
and, and then we're going to go over some things during your new student orientation. But watch these videos and refer back to them if you ever need to know how to do something. Um, and then they were able to access those whenever they had a problem, and, and it made things go a lot more smoothly uh, to have a resource that they could refer back to so, so quickly. Uh, there still were a lot of questions, there still were some problems, but um, I think the videos pretty much um, took care of the vast majority of anything that we, we could have imagined going wrong then. Did, did you guys want to put in a plug to where those videos are at? The, the KCOM iPad uh, actually initiative actually has a YouTube channel. It's If you search KCOM iPads, plural, KCOM iPads on YouTube, the tutorial videos will come up and you can kind of see what we do and how we do it on on the iPad. Yeah, there's some students, nice stuff students, there. I was going to say, students can also access them through the portal um, on the IT website as well. So students can access them that way. Good. Um, I know one of the things that you guys developed or the, the concept was the iPad geniuses. So talk to us a little bit about this idea, how this evolved and how they were trained and um, kind of what their role in the whole process is. Well, we initially, in our before we did our pilot, we did a focus group of students that were similar to Kevin um, that had already had an iPad, came into medical school on their own accord and wanted to use it. So we used those people to sort of you know, figure out our applications, et cetera. And a lot of those people helped us out with, uh, you know, some of the things we established as a part of the pilot. And so we called upon those, a few of those individuals again to help us out. You know, when, when we looked at this upcoming year, we saw the enormity of what was ahead of us, 170 students plus some pilot students in the second year. And so, of course, our concern was, you know, there's we're, the four of us have classes and other things going on. We needed additional help. And so we basically... Uh, solicited to those students for help and uh, there are about four of them that we selected to help out sort of our genius bar if you go into an apple uh, store there's a genius bar there where they'll help you out with problems and so we've recorded, sort of created our own kcon apple genius bar where these students uh, can receive emails from any of the students at any time so they'll do help sessions one-on-one -on -one sessions with faculty one-on-one -on -one sessions um, with uh, any of the students as well and then uh, we'll have them put on sort of quarterly workshops for students that may be struggling, et cetera. Um, and, and, and that's been helpful at the get-go. But uh, like Kevin said, really the tutorial videos have been phenomenal, and a lot of the students get their questions answered that way. Uh, as far as the geniuses go, I haven't talked to them one-on-one uh, -on -one recently, but I think most of the new students have figured out how they're using their iPads. I'm not so sure that the iPad geniuses are uh, getting fielding a lot of questions these days. I think now that we're a little bit into the school year, everyone's kind of um, figured everything out. So they're there as a resource. Uh, students know that they're there. Um, but they're being allowed to study and, and to take care of their things as well. Good. So the students are doing fine. What about faculty? <laughs> Dr. Wilson, you want to take that one? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I guess. You know, I think they're they're doing fine. Um, you know, I know of several departments that have given me some kind of, um, you know, curbs, curbside uh, comments on, on the process, and they're really happy. I know Internal Medicine just uh, dropped me an email the other day. They were kind of excited about how they can use it. I know Anatomy has, has been uh, doing some things with it. Uh, I know Dr. Novinger in the Physical Exam Skills hopes to maybe link some uh, videos in with some of the uh, findings for physical exams. So I think they're excited. I think uh, they, uh, the, the question I hear the most is can, can we have more iPads for more of the faculty so that they can all get their hands on it and start to see how they can apply it in their individual courses. But it's going to take a little time with some more training, exposure, getting kind of the uh, champions out there to uh, teach the others and, and show them how they may uh, be able to use it in a more uh, valuable way. So, um, so far, very positive. Good. Yeah, I know there are at least a couple of faculty who have really kind of taken the ball and run with it. Um, one of you guys want to talk a little bit about what Dr. Chamberlain has done or, or Dr. Kondrashoff? 
Dr. Chamberlain is a, an infectious disease uh, <clears throat> professor here, and he created using the Mac tool uh, iBooks Author. Rather than just create an outline for his um, lecture series that he did on pneumonias and respiratory infections, he wrote out uh, basically an iBook. And this is an interactive, it's a book that's a little bit more interactive. They, he was able to put in multiple image within the text, multiple images within the text uh, that you could scroll through, zoom up on, and, and do all these things um, with the pictures so that as you're looking at bacteria or, or lab results or things, you're able to see that. Um, he was able to also put in multiple choice quizzes throughout the text. So as you were reading things, uh, you could go back and you could take a little multiple choice quiz um, and, and see if you were actually absorbing the information or your eyes were just scanning over it. Um, you're able to highlight. When you highlight, it creates automatically uh, flashcards that you can go back through and, uh, and quiz yourself that way um, from the things that you noted. Um, so he created this notes packet that was now beyond just notes. It was, it was an interactive learning tool that you could go through and really, really uh, test yourself and really push yourself to learn the information. To be honest, we just had a case presentation um, <clears throat> where we had to take a case, a patient case, and, and diagnose this patient uh, of the infectious disease that they had. I felt a hundred times more comfortable with the information that Dr. Chamberlain presented through this iBook than, than the other things. There was less information. I, I was able to study it a, a little bit more in depth than the other diseases that were on it. However, I think that that interactive environment helped me to at least internalize more of the information uh, that was presented. So I thought his, his um, test model for that was very successful. Yeah, that's great. And I, I know one of the the library people just uh, texted me and said, you know, hey, re remember that there's um, some of these tools available in the library. We call it the creation station. But I think that's where Dr. Chamberlain was going to do that. So if there are faculty who are watching, there's some support available through the library to uh, to kind of help with these tools too. One of, one of you other guys want to talk about Dr. Kondrashoff and kind of we've been working with the vendor to create a new app for um, some of the uh, anatomy stuff? I can talk about that. Uh, I've been working with Dr. Kondrashoff myself a little bit and with the Aperio image scope uh, side of things for our histology labs. And uh, just in the last probably two weeks, Aperio has released an, a new app that allows you to access the images that are stored on our servers here. Um, and it is a $15 fee, which we're trying to negotiate with them through a, you know, a school contract that would either reduce the cost for students or provide free access to that app for them. And, you know, what that allows them to do is to just use these digitalized images that Dr. Kondrashoff has, um, pull them up on their iPad, and use this image scope uh, platform uh, that's used by many different pathologists, actually. And uh, we can zoom into a hundred times on on these slides, a hundred thousand times, but or not a hundred times, and uh, you can end up taking screenshots real quickly and and then embedding those back into the notes so that you can see what some of these structures that Dr. Kondrashoff lectures about what they actually look like under a microscope and and you know we've had to I've been working to set up kind of the the class w lessons for the labs and. And it's really quite an easy thing to do, and and really, I think we'll we'll see great things come of it as students start to use it. Yeah, I think that's an interesting project because it, it's you guys actually giving a lot of feedback to the vendor. Um, mm -hmm. and so I think getting a project like this going at this point in the development of apps, where they're still relatively new and there aren't a whole lot of specific applications out there, um, it's really an opportunity to kind of get some detailed involvement in, in the development of those. I guess one other thing that's going on as well is uh, Dr. Evans, the pathology professor and uh, the pathologist here in town, she has quite the extensive collection of pathology slides that she has 
you know, ask Dr. Kondrashoff and some of the fellows to work on getting those digitalized as well so that she can use those in her lectures and as well maybe format some of the pathology labs similar to those that we run in histology. And that's going to be a project that will probably take a year or two to, to complete just due to the vast number of pathology slides there are that she has. But uh, again, another great thing that could ramp up the, even the pathology course here on campus. All right, good. I'm getting some, some feedback from the chat room. We said that we really wanted to get them involved, and I'm getting feedback. Hey, you're not listening to us. So, <laughs> so um, I'm going to look through the questions here. Gene, you, have, you see any of the questions? Um, we talked a little bit about paper savings. Um, no, but we I'm really not haven't seen um, We really haven't seen any uh, detailed numbers on that yet. Um, another question coming in. Beyond the initial workshop introducing the students to the iPad, what training and support has been offered? So I think we talked about that a little bit. With the geniuses, yeah. With the geniuses, yep. Yeah. Um, what, what about eBooks? That's a question that's come up from a couple different people. Are you guys aware of conversations going on with uh, some of the eBook vendors, and what's the potential for that? I think currently, oh, go ahead, Mike. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I think there's huge potential there. Currently, I know Dr. Laird has been really uh, spearheading that and looking at um, some current vendors that are very interested in, in, in doing that with us. Um, one of them is called Vital Source. They use it at Stanford as well. Uh, and I think it has a lot of potential to save students, one, a lot of money and provide them a lot of textbooks that they wouldn't easily have access to otherwise. So I think there's a lot of potential there, and, and I think we should have something set up fairly shortly. I know if, if Dean Laird has his way and, and we have ours, that that will be something accessible to students very soon. Good. The library also has a, a resource available called Clinical Key and um, what is the other up-to-date um, that are available. We're, we're currently working with uh, Mike Cronenfeld from the Arizona campus uh, that's been trying to make that accessible through the application rather than through the browser because sometimes in the browser there's a little bit of formatting issues and things like that. Um, we're not sure when that'll come but that also gives students ac access to textbooks and journal articles very easily. Uh, I know up to date is a very commonly used uh, resource for looking up standard of care and things like that. So those are also available to students. And those have been the biggest. I, one thing that I, just the other day, Clinical Key was here on campus, and I went over to talk to them um, about you know what they have coming up, and they actually Clinical Key has been kind of a difficult. Uh, web page to navigate on an iPad and they said that within the next month to maybe two, they said October, but we, we all know that that can at, at times stretch a, a month or two beyond that. They said October they should have an iPad friendly web page uh, version that would be coming out that would allow us to access a lot of their content much easier on an iPad and uh, they say an app for that should be out here uh, I think they said in the spring or something. So, Clinical Key is another great resource with an app or you know an iPad-friendly web page that should be out relatively nice. shortly. Um, I'm just going to make a couple clarifications here. There was another question that came in about um, asking whether this was just a volunteer scenario. Um, in the the project's a year old, so there there was a stage when it was volunteer, correct? Where we had I don't remember I think it was twenty students who volunteered to kind of participate in a, a pilot study. But now, um, as of this fall, it's all of the first year KCUM class of two thousand sixteen students who have the, uh, the iPads, correct? Correct. Correct. Um, and there was another question too about whether it was second year or first years, and it's just first years at this point. Um, but there is some carryover. I mean, obviously we've got Dan who's uh, beyond his second year, and uh, um, so I think it, it goes we also beyond. Have, we also have, when we were doing the initial pilot studies, uh, there were a few second years that are now third years that received uh, a handful of iPads so that we could um, get some information and feedback as to how they are used in clinical rotations. Um, that 
the, that feedback is uh, continually coming in and, and we're kind of experimenting with them to see how to best prepare uh, students in the future that are going out on rotations with their iPads. To bounce off that, Kevin, we I, I sent out a survey about them, well, a couple weeks ago, actually, uh, just requesting as many as had mobile devices or iPads to that are in their third and fourth clinical years, just seeing how many of them would be interested in giving us feedback. And I've, I've got, I think, between 50 and 60 students currently with mobile devices that are giving me feedback, you know, periodically uh, via surveys as well. And, and so we do have quite a few out there and representing most of the clinical sites that hopefully will will aid us in preparation for, you know, the big group that, that heads out within, within the next year. So, Good. Um, question came in about copyright issues. Um, obviously with some of the textbook issues, are, are you guys hearing any of that from faculty uh, or, or students, um, issues with copyright? I think the the use of clinical key and um, really clinical key has kind of negated that the, the te a lot of the textbooks that students are using in digital formats anyway are available legally and uh, within copyright laws so uh, students are using that resource rather than really searching out as far as far as you know I've heard and been aware of um, students really use clinical key there are uh, professors, when they lecture, they put in plugs for clinical keys. So I think, uh, as that resource is made available to students, they they seek that out rather than going uh, to other sources. Yeah, and Cynthia in the library w was just commenting too that the library resources are already licensed for use, so there's no um, copyright issue there. So the library is a big part of of kind of the project too. Right. Um, uh, there was a question on cost. Uh, cost is a factor. Who's paying for this? Um, so basically, this is a student purchased um, device, correct? And, and it comes as part of their financial aid package. It was Dr. Wilson described it earlier. It's really just like them getting their um, their little black bag of equipment. So the stethoscope, um, the otoscope, those kinds of things. But but let's make it clear. We did not add any additional costs to the students uh, uh, package we were able to kind of shift costs and and rearrange uh, the needs of other computer uh, support for them to uh, not uh, raise cost in terms of their financial aid at all so everyone was able to do a great job working together to make sure that happened yeah I agree it was kind of a net win um, anything else other questions that I'm missing Pipe up if uh, if I'm missing some. I think I've I've gotten them all. Um, guys, as you, as you think a little bit about the project in the future, um, and, and Dr. Wilson, maybe this one goes to you too. Since the project is so new and it's just getting underway, are we thinking about what the educational goals are beyond just um, kind of the, the the novelty of the project at this point? Yeah, I think that's a really good question, and um, you know, as Kevin I think said earlier, it's a little bit hard to measure some of the the things that we would normally want to uh, monitor from an educational standpoint. I think as we move forward, uh, we need to look more closely at do, does you know how does this impact our curriculum, our student learning? Uh, is it just um, another you know helpful tool, or does it have some bigger impact, some bigger way of really uh, enhancing? the curriculum so I think the faculty and, and with the students support and help will help us look at those kind of issues and maybe try to start forming and answering some of those questions yeah I know from an IT standpoint we see more and more types of apps being developed that really kind of um, traverse the area between online learning and in-class learning so there's a lot more classroom interactivity tools that are being developed um, where it's actually the, the students using the iPads in class as well as out of class. Um, so I think there will be more that comes in that area too. I need to, to excuse myself here. I've got to run down to a class activity. So I just want to say thanks for uh, your questions and thanks for letting us talk about this. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. All righty. We'll see you. 
We'll see, I know a couple of the other guys have to go too, but before we lose too many of you, I, I just want to ask the question, um, how, how do you guys see this affecting you actually practicing medicine longer term? Do you think it'll have an impact or, or is it really just um, kind of a, a method rather than anything more deep? For, for me, I think one, as far as... Oh, go ahead, Tom. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, coming from a clinical standpoint, so many more doctors nowadays are using the iPad in clinic to help teach um, the patients as well as themselves and keep everything up to date. It's amazing how you can walk into a doctor's office and see what's going on with just technology. So I think in the long run, as technology continues to advance, as, I mean, there's even probes that are being invented for the iPad and iPhones to plug in to do ultrasound or other types of things like that, that this tech, type of technology takes a huge... Um, advanced into the medical field, students who have had uh, practice with it will be better prepared to go out and to serve in the medical field. Yeah, I think technology and medicine is really intertwined, like Talon is saying, and it's inescapable in, in some ways. What, what I hope as a future physician is that this technology will be so convenient for me that I can spend more time on my patients and less time worrying about uh, technology around my office that I can use something like the iPad if that's what's here in the future to be a better physician and really that will be an advantage to my patients I can spend more time and be more effective for them and I think uh, that's what I, I see the iPad doing sort of right now for doctors that use it and I can see it all obviously enhancing in the future. I think as well you know just having I, I guess I heard a quote from, uh, I believe it was a student with a similar kind of initiative up in at Ohio State University that said, it's not about how much I know and can fit into my head, how much information I can get my hands on. And, the, you know, the iPad or, and some of these mobile devices truly do give you that access to as much information as you can get your hand on just really rapidly. So I think that's a huge key, and I think as well it, it can be a great educational tool to use to, to help educate your patients about their own health care uh, just at the bedside. So I do see a, a huge role with, with these devices as well going into the future, and it hopefully will prepare KCOM students to, to be those better prepared physicians in the future. Well, I hope it, it helps us to kind of take um, uh, the, the learning into the healthcare environment at, at a broader scope, into hospitals, into clinics. Um, you know, if, if the older physicians or the, the more experienced physicians who've already kind of um, built their habits see these new tools, um, maybe it will change some of the way that uh, healthcare gets practiced out in those areas too. Well, I think it really, you know, is about point of care. You know, what can we do to, to better uh, things at the point of care with a doctor-patient relationship? And I think access to information is key. You know, having uh, immediate and, you know, up-to-date uh, information uh, readily accessible to the physician in the field at the point of care with the patient. And I uh, agree with Dan, the patient education piece is also huge. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity uh, in the the clinical setting to uh, enhance what we can do to help our patients uh, take better care of themselves. Excellent. I think that's a good note to, uh, to end on. I want to thank you guys. Um, it's been a good session. Hopefully people have learned something. Um, we'll post this up on uh, the ITS YouTube channel uh, after the recording gets uh, put together. And then um, if uh, those who are watching, uh, we've got uh, a couple sessions coming up in October. Um, October is Cybersecurity Month, so we're going to do a session on security. And then uh, we're hoping that uh, we can also get uh, Dr. Phelps um, to do a little review of his first 100 or 120 days uh, in the presidency and talk a little bit about that too. So um, please stay tuned. Thanks much. Appreciate it.